The Mount Farm World Tour is back again and this time we're going to be taking a look at the mounts you can get from the Broken Isles. If you're unfamiliar with this series, we run through a continent at a time and go through all of the mounts found in that continent, the ones that make sense for the video at least, so if you haven't seen the previous episodes, I would definitely recommend checking them out. Our first destination up is going to be the Dalaran found in Broken Shores. To get there you can use your Hearthstone to Dalaran or you can use the portals from Orgrimmar or Stormwind to Azuna and go to Dalaran from there. Once you're in Dalaran, the first mount up is going to be the Brine Deep Bottom Feeder. To get started, you'll need to head to a little island just off the northwest of Dalaran. You can get there via flying if you have flying, or you can use things like Glide or Goblin Glider to jump off the edge and make your way to the floating island. Alternatively, there is an item you can fish up in Dalaran sewers from the swirling pools, but I wouldn't really recommend that. So once you're on the island, you want to pick up the quest from Conjurer Mar Ghost, fish up a Drowned Mana, Hand that in and then from there on out you'll have a repeatable stage of being able to hand in 1 drowned mana for 50 rep or 10 drowned mana for 500 rep. And you want to just keep repeating this until you hit best friend rank and then fish up an additional 100 mana to be able to purchase the mount from him. Pretty straightforward, your fishing skill doesn't really seem to impact things and you can do this from about level 100 upwards. You might be able to do it lower but I haven't seen anyone confirm that. The final thing to note is there is a mob or an item that you can get called the Mark of Aquios. When you use this it'll summon a mob, killing that mob will give you a buff or like make the, or the water buff to give a 100% drop chance on the drowned mana for about 2 minutes. So doing this with multiple people is just going to speed things up. The next mount up is going to be Rat Stallion which we'll also find in Dalaran but this time within the Dalaran sewers. So head down there and our goal there is to collect 20,000 sightless eyes which will go towards the achievement Underbelly Tycoon. Once you've done that you'll get yourself the mount. Now it's not 20,000 on you at once, it's just 20,000 collected in general, but feel free to spend the Sightless Eyes on things to speed things up as well. In terms of getting Sightless Eyes, there's a good chunk of methods of getting them, but the best methods are going to be from PvP when the guards aren't around, you'll be able to get about 50 Sightless Eyes per kill, and also there'll be a bunch of chests that spawn that'll give between 10 to 100 Sightless Eyes, so that's an option as well if you're actually winning within PvP. If not, you want to go more of a PvE route, then you have these bosses that will spawn when the guards are around and these will give you about 90 sightless eyes per kill but not only that you'll be able to use an item on them which I'll have marked on the map now where the NPC is. And you'll be able to buy an item from this NPC called the wild mana wand. If you use that on the rare once it spawns then you'll get yourself double the eyes from the kill. So definitely worth having wands around as they're going to give you a big chunk of eyes per kill on those rares. Alternatively as well you can do pet battles, you'll get about 75 eyes if you kill the pet battles, so definitely worth doing when there's downtime. And there will be a quest that will randomly pop up too from Fizzy Liver Snapper or Zapper, and that'll give you about 150 sightless eyes when that's around as well, but that seems to only really be doable once per day, so do keep that in mind too. But keep going, get yourself 20,000 sightless eyes, and you'll get yourself the Rat Stallion. The next mount up in this list is going to be the Arcadian War Turtle which we can buy from the NPC Zur Ios who's kind of hidden away a little bit in Dalaran and he will randomly sell you the mount for 150 curious coins. He won't have it every day, you're going to have to keep checking back when you do have the, the coins needed until he is actually selling the mount. To get the coins though this is going to be the rough part, there isn't really a grindable method, a fairly low drop chance for most of the sources, so you're just going to have to keep doing activities every day until you do build up your 150, but you're going to get them from Paragon Caches, from Emissary Caches, from Dungeons, Normal, Heroic and Mythic in Legion, from Raids in Legion, from Invasion Points in Argus, one of the better methods because you can do an Invasion Point every like 2 or 3 hours, that's a pretty good method, uh, from World Bosses both in Broken Isles and in Argus as well, and then Rare Spawns as well are going to have a really low chance, so just keep repeating that stuff, get yourself the 150 and then eventually you'll be able to buy the mount from him. Next up we also do have another vendor mount found in Dalaran and that is the Bloodfang Cocoon. A really cool, creepy, depending on how you look at it, spider mount. This will cost you 2 million gold, so you're going to need quite a bit of gold. And this isn't always purchasable, there will be an NPC that will pop up every so often in the toy store called the Mad Merchant. But when he's up you're able to purchase the mount for 2 million gold. The next mount up is the Spirit of Eshiro and this mount comes from Archaeologer. It's technically obtained in High Mountain, but the initial quest comes from Dalaran, so I thought it made sense to talk about it here. So within the Archaeology building in Dalaran, if you're 110 plus and you have Archaeologer, 
The NPC there will give you a quest and this quest changes every two weeks. You could be waiting quite a while until this one comes up again. The one that we need is called Laying to Rest. And that'll be to go to High Mountain and get 600 bone fragments I believe it is. Once you're done with all that you'll be able to go for another quest and get yourself the mount. So definitely do be keeping an eye out for when this quest is up. Because when it comes and when it's gone you're going to be waiting a very long time for it to come back around. And I mean months. So definitely do make sure you are looking out for this one. So we're mostly done in Dalaran now. I just wanted to talk about a couple of things that is worth doing now before we do leave Dalaran. And the first is picking up these four items because they're going to be useful for some mounts later on if you don't have them. This is just from the inn and also from the cheese shop. From those two places you want to buy the smoked elderhorn, the Azunian grapes, the pungent vicle gamelust, and also the dried dillberries. So make sure you've got those in your inventory and we're good there. And if you haven't already, I would recommend unlocking the world quests within Legion if you're 110 plus. As there's no prerequisites anymore, you just need to be level 110, you don't need any rep and stuff. Go speak to Khadgar in the Violet Citadel, pick up the quest Unite in the Isles, hand it in, and you will unlock yourself the world quests. And the final thing you might want to do while you're here, if you haven't already, is unlock the Broken Shores. To do that, you need to have unlocked the world quest, which we just did then. Go to the Crisis Landing and you'll find Khadgar there once more who will give you the Armies of Legion Fall quest. You'll go through that and you'll unlock yourself the Broken Shores. Now if that doesn't work for you, some people do say if you head out to the Broken Shores itself, you'll be there. That's generally for people who've already done it on the main characters. If you're completely new, you'll have to follow those steps. Next destination is going to be your Class Order Hall. Not all of them are quite in the Broken Isles, but this is going to be your main way of getting to them. So it makes sense to include it here. When you initially enter Dalaran, you'll have an NPC that will come up to you and give you a quest to go and unlock your order hall or get an artifact weapon. You want to go through that and keep going through this quest chain. It's a very, very long quest chain, but it's basically your order hall campaign. You'll go through all available quests for that. Once you're done with that, then you'll go to the Broken Shores and you'll complete the achievement Breach in the Tomb. And once you're done with all of that, you'll head back to your order hall. You'll have a new quest to do and you'll get yourself your class order hall mount me it's the the monk one looks pretty damn cool next up to talk about is the class order hall this is important for quite a few reasons the first being it will allow you to access the initial quest chains for the various zones in the broken isles it will also give you a mount at the end of the campaign quest line this is a look at the monk mount and there's a different one for each class and multiple depending on your class as well and finally, it will give you access to the Order Hall mission table, which is going to give you missions for additional rep and also a chance at another mount as well. So for the class Order Hall mount, to get this started, what you'll want to do is go into Dalaran. An NPC will pop up that will kind of annoy you and you'll pick up a quest from them that will be to go and get your artifact weapon or find your class Order Hall. Go through that and follow that quest chain all the way through. You'll know when you're done with it, you'll get a title and there'll be kind of like a climactic end to it, basically. Once you're done with that part, then you'll head over to the Broken Shores, which we talked about unlocking a moment ago, and you'll go through the achievement chain called Breaching the Tomb. Once you're done with that full achievement chain, the last one should be the Strike Them Down. There should be another quest that'll pop up. You'll pick up that quest, that'll be to go and continue your kind of order hall stuff, and at the end of that chain, you should get yourself your class mount. So now that we're done with the class order hall stuff, we can move on to the zones themselves. And the first one up is going to be Azuna. The first mount we're looking at is the long forgotten hippogriff. This one can feel a little bit tricky and overwhelming at first, but I'll go through the info and give you some tips as well. So the way this works is you need to find five crystals within Azuna. When you click the fifth crystal, you'll get the mount. Only one person can get the mount at a time. And then there'll be a cooldown for the crystals to respawn again. The tricky part though is you can't die once you've clicked the crystal because you'll lose this kind of invisible debuff and you have 8 hours after clicking the first crystal to find the fifth so if you run out of time you'll basically have to start again. And once someone finds the mount, as I said one person can only get it at a time, it will go on a respawn of about 2-8 to eight hours so you will have multiple chances in a day at getting this but you will also have competition too. Now, the tricky part, the main tricky part, is that there is about 100 different spawn locations for the crystals within Azuna, and there's only going to be 5 up at a time, so it's quite a lot of places you need to check and look, and the crystals are a little bit hidden in some places too, so it can be quite tricky. To make things a little bit easier, there is also some add-ons that you can get for waypoints. I would recommend TomTom Tom and Paste, and those work together to paste in a bunch of coordinates into TomTom, 
and you'll have an arrow that will kind of guide you to each of the known spots. So those will be in the description down below just to help you out a little bit. That's the base info that you need, so good luck on getting yourself the long forgotten hippogriff. The next mount up we're going to talk about is the prestigious warwolf, and this is going to come from multiple different zones, or at least there's things you need to do in multiple different zones, and one of those zones is Azuna. So to get this mount you need to complete the achievement called Free For All, More For Me, which requires you to do 20 of the PvP world quests multiple times in each zone. So for example in Azuna the world quest is called Operation Murloc Freedom, and you need to complete that world quest 20 times. And you'll have Bareback Brawl, which you'll find in Stormheim. You'll have Black Rock Rumble, which we'll find in Valshara. And then we'll have Dark Brawl Arena, which we'll find in High Mountain. So you need to complete all of those four world quests 20 times. And there's only one up at a time. So you need to kind of be coming on at certain time periods to make sure you do catch the quests that you do need. But keep repeating that and eventually you will get the achievement and get yourself the mount. The next thing we're going to talk about is the Paragon Caches. Now this applies to Azuna but also works the exact same for the other zones as well so do keep that in mind as we're talking about it now in detail. So the way this works is you'll get yourself to Exalted with that zone's rep. So in this case in Azuna it would be the Court of Frondus. Once you hit Exalted you'll unlock the Paragon Bar and when you get 10,000 rep in the Paragon Bar you'll be able to turn that rep in essentially for a Paragon Cache. And inside that cache, you'll have a very low chance in Azuna of getting the Cloudwing Hippogriff mount. It looks alright, and this is probably going to take you quite a lot of time. So in terms of getting rep with Court of Frondus, the ways I would recommend is first of all doing all the quests within the zone, especially the main storyline, that's going to give you a big chunk of rep. Then you have world quests, make sure you're doing those whenever they come up. Then you'll have Emissary Handins, this will be the bar on the bottom left of your screen, there'll be like one every day. And you'll be able to turn that in once you're done with it for 1,500 rep for that specific faction. It's also worth doing the Kirin Tor one as well because that's kind of like a wild card. You'll be able to turn that in for a rep of your choice. You'll also have mission tables in your class order hall which we touched on earlier. But building up your order hall mission table is very value because you'll be able to send out missions that will give you back rep tokens. And these rep tokens are bind on account. So you could have multiple alts doing rep missions as well. So do keep that in mind. And then finally we also have the Demon Soul Stone which is an item from Argus. Argus is a zone we'll be covering in the next video of the World Tour. But just know that the Demon Soul Stone is kind of like a rare drop from the rares and the mobs within Argus. And that will give you a thousand rep with all of the uh, Legion zones or reps as well. So just keep working up your rep bar. Keep handing in the Paragon Caches and eventually you will get yourself the Cloudwing Hippogriff. The final mount up in Azuna is going to be the Predatory Bloodgazer, which is one of four Falcosaur mounts available in the Broken Isles. And they all work very similar to each other, so I'm just going to cover this one in detail and then we'll lightly touch on what you need to know for the others. So the way this works is first of all we need to get our hands on the Combat Pet Falcosaur, which we'll get from the world quest in the zone called Bloodgazer Swarm. That world quest isn't always up and you do need that world quest to be able to get the pet. So do make sure you are keeping an eye out for it. When the world quest is up, you'll head over there and you'll want to look out for the Bloodgazer Matriarch, which is around 35.5. I'll have a map up now, showing you roughly the coordinates. Kill that, and then just south, not too far, just south of there, you'll find the little Bloodgazer on the ground and you'll be able to feed it food. And that's why we bought the food from Dalaran earlier on. For this one, we need the Azunian grapes, so make sure they are in your inventory. You'll be able to feed that and then it will become a pet. And from there on out you need to summon the pet and it'll have a different quest for you each time you summon it. The first one's going to be to level it to 25 and then it'll be to go and kill enemy players or do some kind of pet battle or whatever. And one thing to note as well is if you complete the daily quest on one character, for some reason you can log out, log on to another character, summon the pet again and you'll have another quest for you to be able to do. So really worth keeping in mind because it is going to speed up the process otherwise you're stuck to doing one quest per day. Keep working through all of the quests and then eventually you'll have a final quest which will be to go and help its mother again and you'll get yourself the mount. So we're done with Azuna now and we're going to move on to the next zone which is going to be Valshara. Now there's not a whole lot for us to do here in terms of mounts but there's still a couple at least. So the first one up is going to be from the Paragon Cache which is for the zone's rep called Dreamweavers. Same as Azuna, you'll get that to Exalted and then move your way to Paragon, which will give you those repeatable Paragon Caches. And from the Paragon Cache in this zone, we can get ourselves the Wild Dream Runner. 
The final mount up in Valshirar is going to be the next Falcasol mount for us to get. And that is going to be the Viridian Sharp Talon. So like before, it works pretty much exactly the same. You're going to go out there when the world quest, the Sharp Talon Swarm is up. And you're going to kill the Matriarch and you're going to feed this one the dried build berries. So do make sure those are in your inventory. The Matriarch you'll find around 4810. Maybe you'll find around 4710. Once again, the map will give you a rough idea of where to find it. Feed it, go for its quests, and at the end of the quest chain, you will get yourself the mount. Our next destination up is going to be High Mountain, and the first mount we're going to talk about here is the Ivory Hawk Strider. This is one of the more annoying grinds in the game, and to get it going, you need to unlock this hidden faction called Talon's Vengeance. To get that unlocked, you need to have gotten yourself one of the four Falcasaur mounts that we talked about earlier. Once you've got one of them as a fully grown mount that you can use, then you want to mount up on that mount and head over to Aviana just above Rivers Bend in High Mountain. You'll speak to them while mounted, you'll have some dialogue to go through and that will unlock this hidden faction. Once the faction's unlocked you should get yourself the Ivory Talon which will allow you to use the item in one of the PvP world quest zones or the Falcasaur world quest zones within the Broken Isles and attack Horde or Alliance players regardless of your own faction. Killing players will give you a Mark of Prey which you can turn in for 100 reputation. So those rep tokens will get you all the way up to Honored, and then when you're Honored, you'll be able to buy yourself the Ivory Feather from that Quartermaster, and that will allow you to gain reputation in Battlegrounds as well, which will just make the journey a little bit smoother. You'll keep repeating those two methods to get yourself to Exalted. Once you're Exalted, you'll be able to head back to that Quartermaster and purchase yourself the Ivory Hawk Strider. The next mount we're going to talk about is this zone's Paragon Cash Mount, and that is going to be the High Mountain Elderhorn. But it's exactly the same, get yourself the Paragon rep to 10,000, hand it in, and you'll have a chance of getting yourself the High Mountain Elderhorn mount. The final mount up in High Mountain is going to be the third Falcasaur mount for us to obtain, and that will be the Snow Feather Hunter. To get this one going, you'll need the world quest up called Snow Feather Swarm. Head out there and kill the Matriarch once again. Once the Matriarch is dead, which is around 3521, then you'll be able to head all the way over to 3228, so it's quite far away and feed it the Smoked Elder Horn, so do make sure you do have the Smoked Elder Horn in your bag. Repeat the steps from previous and get yourself this mount. The next stop on our list is going to be Stormheim, and once again not a whole lot for us to do here. The first thing to talk about is the Paragon mount, which will be the Valajar Stormwing. Same deal as the other zones, just get yourself to the Paragon rep, hand it in and you'll have a chance of the Valajar Stormwing, which is in my opinion one of the better looking Paragon mounts. The final Stormheim mount for us to get is going to be the final Falcasaur mount as well, and that is going to be the Brilliant Diabeak. So for this one, you'll need the world quest up called Diabeak Swarm. You'll head over there and you'll kill the Matriarch, which is around 7976. And then once that is dead, you'll head over to about 8069 and you'll feed the little baby. It's kind of on the rock above. It's like a elevated a little bit and you'll feed that the Pungent Vical Gamalust. So you need to make sure that's in your bag. Repeat the same steps with the other ones and you'll get yourself the final Falcasaur mount. The next stop on our world tour is going to be the Broken Shores and here we're going to get ourselves one mount which is the Abyss Worm. This mount comes from the Raid Tomb of Sargeras and it comes from the boss Mistress Sazine on around a 2% drop chance so not the worst not the best and you can do this on LFR, Normal, Heroic or Mythic to have a chance at the mount as it is a raid you're only, only going to have one chance per week per character on LFR and then a chance at normal slash heroic and then another chance at mythic as well so you have three chances per character per week if you are doing on all three difficulties. To access the LFR version you'll want to head over to Dalaran and there'll be an NPC which I'm showing you now you want to select the gates of hell and just run through that you'll need to kill two bosses to access Mistress Sazine. The final stop on our world tour is going to be Suramar, and if you've never done anything in Suramar before, you'll want to head back to Dalaran and speak to Khadgar, and he'll have the quest called Khadgar's Discoverer. That will lead you into Suramar, you'll do a bunch of stuff to kind of set up your base, and then once your base is set up, the first mount we're going to look at is the Arcanist Mana Saber, which is directly related to the kind of Suramar quest lines. So the first thing you'll want to do is Night Fallen but Not Forgotten, which is an achievement to go for all of the quests, so Basically just do the quests that are available for the storyline there and look for the achievement if you do get stuck on any parts. Once you're done with that, you'll need to do the Good Samaritan achievement. 
Once you're done with that, you'll need to do the Insurrection. Once you're done with that, there's more. You'll need to do the Lord of the Shadow Council quest, which you'll obtain from Khadgar. So once you're done with Insurrection, head back to Khadgar in Dalaran. Pick up that quest, go do uh, kill Gul'dan in Nighthold. Doesn't matter what difficulty you kill him on. That'll teleport you out. You'll head back to Surma, and then you'll have your final kind of RP quest line that'll eventually reward you with the Arcanist Mana Saber. This is going to take quite a bit of time, though. Do keep that in mind. The next mount up in Surma we're going to talk about is the Lottian Prowler. And it's quite a nice looking mount, but it is a bit more of a pain to get. This, to get this, you need an item called the Torn Invitation. To get yourself the Torn Invitation, it has a few sources, but it is fairly rare. The first source is going to be the Nightborn Caches, like the Emissary Caches. So you complete the full world quest, you hand it in, you'll have a chance from that. And then there's also the Withered Army Training. Might not be something you're familiar with right now, but as you quest through Suramar, you'll have a quest chain that will teach you about the Withered Training. And you basically don't need to do much in there. Once you're in the Withered Training, you can say that you're done. And you'll be given a chest and inside that chest will have a chance of the torn invitation the final method is from the order hall missions there'll be a chance of it popping up there once you get yourself the torn invitation you'll click it it'll give you a quest called the noble event which will basically just be to complete order hall missions so it is worth keeping your order hall missions and followers you know leveled and stuff as it will make that easier complete the tasks through the mission table and then once you're done you'll go out and save the mount and you'll get yourself the mount the next mount to talk about is the Lay Woven Flying Carpet, and similar to the other zones, this is the Paragon Mount. So get yourself to Exalted with the Nightfallen, get your Paragon Rep up, and then hand that in for a Nightfallen Cache, and inside that Cache you'll have a small chance at the Lay Woven Flying Carpet. Our final stop in Surma is going to be the Raid the Nighthold, and clearing Gul'dan on Normal, Heroic, or Mythic will have a chance of roughly 1% chance of giving you the Living Infernal Core Mount, and also worth noting if you kill Tychondrius in the same raid on any of those difficulties as well, and you're a Legion Blacksmither, then you'll have a chance of getting the recipe for the Steelbound Harness, which when learned will give you the Steelbound Devourer amount. This is also a BOE item, you can buy it off the auction house or sell it as well if you do have the rest of it. Alternatively, killing Gul'dan on Mythic difficulty, which is a lot harder, you're going to need a character with very very good gear, like 470-ish, and on your skill level and class, then you'll be able to have a sub-ish 1% chance of getting the fiendish hellfire core. So if you're struggling with this, definitely worth bringing a friend or two just to make it easier to clear. So that does bring us to the end of all the zones within the Broken Isles, but there are a few more mounts I wanted to touch on as they don't particularly have a zone and or they just were too long to talk about in the video themselves. So the first ones up are the Riddler mounts. These will take you all around Azeroth pretty much. And they have kind of like uh, secrets to them and puzzles etc. So there will be guides in the description to all three of these if you are interested in going through them. And they are fairly fun to do so I would recommend it. The first one up is the Fathom Dweller. And this is a water only mount. Doesn't look too bad. And it was the first of the three introduced. The next one up is the Riddler's Mindworm. This is a flying mount. So you can use that wherever you want. And then the final one is the Lucid Nightmare. And this one's the harder of the three, as the last part that you need to go through is RNG driven. And you're just going to have to either get an add-on to help you with it, or kind of brute force it, or figure out your own strat. You can't essentially be helped with it. So those are the three riddle amounts. Next up to talk about are the two glory mounts. The first one being the Glory of the Legion Hero, which will award you with the Lay Feather Hippogriff. And this is from the various uh, Legion Broken Isles dungeons. Most of this is soloable by a 120 character, but there are two achievements where you'll need a 4-man group and a 5-man group for to get that done. So do keep that in mind when you are going into it, and there will be a link to the guide for that down below. The other one is the Defiled Reigns, which is from the Glory of the Legion Raider. And you'll have to go into the Emerald Nightmare and Nighthold. Do those achievements there to get yourself that mount. And the final mount to talk about to wrap up our Broken Isles World Tour is going to be the Northern Elder Horn. This mount comes from level working, so you'll have to level up your level working, and eventually you'll get a quest called Mountain Made Easer, which will send you over to Stormheim, and you'll kind of have to put a lasso around an Elder Horn and chase it around until it becomes kind of tame. This is quite difficult to do though, and it becomes more difficult if you don't have Legion flying, so do keep that in mind. But yeah, that does wrap it up. So thank you for watching the world tour for Broken Isles. The next one up will be Argus, so keep an eye out for that in the future. 
And outside of that, look out for my various other videos as well. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.